So I've been running NV um, 4.5 AR discs uh, wheels on my Check Trackpoint SL6 uh, 2018 model, and I've noticed some problems uh, actually with uh, the disc brakes and the lock rings. Um, so this set of NVs has the DD, DT Swiss 240 hubs, and this is the front wheel, and the front hub is actually uh, naturally a 15 millimeter hub so it needs this uh, end cap here to make it into a 12 millimeter which is uh, comp compatible with the track checkpoint however this end plug the problem comes in that this end plug is tapered so it tapers you can imagine the base of it is 15 millimeters and then has a taper to a 12 and the sidewalls are not exactly straight up and down so uh, with that taper it really closes off the space between the teeth and the actual uh, spa um, end, end plug itself. So when I try to put the tool in to loosen this end plug, the teeth barely engage. You can see from here, and it's bottomed out right here. So that makes things really difficult when you're trying to torque down this uh, center lock ring. Um, and you can see here, I've sort of uh, damage some of the teeth here and trying to do that um, and what I have to do in order to make that work is actually tilt the tool so that the teeth engage that's the only way I can actually um, get some engagement on, on the teeth here enough to turn it and torque it I doubt that I'm getting up to high enough to get to that you know 40 newton meters recommended torque um, so that concerns me um, so what I did was I looked into other solutions uh, that would be uh, that would make the installation a little bit um, the installation a little bit more feasible with the correct torques. Um, so I have here uh, is another lock ring from Shimano. This is more of the mountain bike lock ring. Um, they usually specify it for their 15 millimeter or their 20 millimeter uh, through axles. Um, it's similar to this, but you can see the profile is a little bit raised, and instead of using this tool. Uh, to tighten it down, you can use this spline tool here um, that locks into the divots along the outside rim of the lock ring so that you are able to turn it. So that sort of helps me avoid the lack of clearance in the between the, the ring and the hub end cap. Um, unfortunately, in my Trek checkpoint, and I'll show you guys this in a second, uh, when this is installed, it actually, you can already tell from the side profile here, let me adjust my camera, that it protrudes much further from the hub than the, the road center lock ring. So what happens is I'm left with literally about a paper's thickness of clearance between this ring and the inside of my fork. And I'll, again, I'll show you that in a second, but that's really concerning because even though I can torque it down, a lot tighter than this guy, uh, given the engagement I have. Um, I'm not confident that if there's a little flex in the fork, this guy might start rubbing the inside of my fork. So that was uh, not necessarily a go for me uh, and a little bit concerning. So I took a look at another option and it's this one. So this is the sort of like more cost effective lock ring that comes with uh, they're, they're the lower end bikes um, for Shimano. And this is the Tourney SMRT10 lock ring. And it's a lot heavier um, than the other lock rings. But the advantage is that it's, it allows the use of the spline tool, but it's super flat. So uh, here it is from the side. And then compare that to this guy here. So a lot thicker and I'll share the measurements of these thicknesses. Um, in a second. So I'm hoping that installing this uh, instead of this guy will help me get the lock ring to the appropriate torque as well as uh, clear the fork. So here I have the lock ring off and you can see uh, it's a little difficult to film but from the side profile this end cap is conical. It's straight here and then it flares out. So it's this little flare, that little ring right there, um, the flare out of the side, side walls is what's preventing the tool um, from going down into 
the lock ring. Here's another look at those three lock rings. Um, so this one is the normal road one. It's model Shimano RT97 or XTR975. This has uh, two names. This one is the Shimano MTB XTM8010. And this one is the Turney, the Shimano Turney SMRT10. So these are the three different types of lock rings that you can actually have. Um, let's take a look at the differences in their dimensions and their actual size, uh, the weights. So we'll take a look at the um, road lock ring, which is the RT97 again, and I'm including the pressure washer uh, in here. So the wave washer. All right, so that one is very light, eight grams. Now the MTB XT with the thicker sidewall here, XTM8010. That one's two grams more at 10 grams. And then the one that I'm looking forward to using on my bike, um, it seems to be a heavier gauge, um, maybe even steel, not aluminum. Uh, and it has a thin sidewall and it's probably able to have that thin sidewall because the material's stronger. And unfortunately though, with that comes weight. So this one is actually 19 grams. So it's pretty much double the road lock ring. And this is the Turney SMRT10. Okay, so let's take a look at the thicknesses um, that we're working with here for each of these lock rings. So we'll start with the road. Um, the road lock ring comes in at 2.41 uh, millimeters thick. That's for the flange. And I know that clears the fork, so that works. The only thing is, is I can't turn it. Um, okay, now the MTB M8010. This is easy to turn and torque with a thicker um, flange here uh, that we can use a spline tool, but it's 3.95 millimeters thick. And I know that barely, barely clears um, the fork. And for the tourney, we have um, a spline sp uh, spline tool install and a thinner flange. So that's 2.17. So that should afford us enough clearance. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit heavy. Um, and that's something that I may just have to, to live with here. So here's my track checkpoint, and I've installed the MT8010 lock ring, the thicker one. Um, and you can see here, if I can get it to focus, there's barely any clearance. It looks like it's touching right now, but there's actually like a sliver of clearance there um, that allows the wheel to turn on a stand, but I definitely do not trust it. Um, on the road. So I'm going to slide this. So this post-it passes right through there. Um, but it is a little concerning that it's so close because any flex in this fork or frame could cause that to rub. So um, not too not too happy about that. And the reason that there's this bump in the fork is because that's actually a bump out from the boss that is used to mount the flat mount caliper. So this boss right here for this uh, bolt is the one that's protruding right there. So here's the same wheel with the uh, Turney SMRT10 lock ring washer, or lock washer, um, sorry, lock ring, um, center lock ring. And now, you can see that compared to the other one, I have much more clearance. And I measured this with a cal pair of calipers and uh, it's about two millimeters. So a little bit more breathing room than uh, this one afforded, which is the M8010. And it has the ability to be tightened, unlike this one, um, which um, interfered too much with the DT Swiss uh, 240 end cap, uh, hub end cap, uh, that converts it from a 15 to a 12 millimeter. All right, well, so that looks like it solves my problem. A little bit more weight, 10 grams extra, but um, I think that this will improve my ability to um, correctly install the disc and torque it down to the right specs, um, as well as maintain clearance on that fork. So uh, for those of you uh, who have the DT Swiss, 240 hubs and have a checkpoint and are looking at this problem. I hope this was helpful. Um, 
yeah, let me know in the comments below uh, if you have any questions and I'll be happy to try to help you out.